Cardinals and much of baseball, of course, mourning after the shock and the shocking loss of Daryl Kyle. He was found dead today in a Chicago hotel. The St. Louis pitcher was only 33 years old. He leaves behind a wife and three young children, two five-year-old twins and a nine-month-old baby boy. The cause of death is not yet known. Police have found no signs of forced entry in the hotel room. And for right now, Kyle, they're saying, police are saying, died in his sleep of natural causes. An autopsy is scheduled on Sunday. Kyle's brother Danny says the two went out to dinner together Friday night and everything seemed normal. Today, of course, it was not normal. It all unfolded with the Cards and Cubs ready to play a day game at Wrigley Field. Ann Werner has more from Chicago. A sellout crowd of 47,000 packed Wrigley Field for game two of the Cubs Cardinals series. Fans knew something was amiss. The Cardinals weren't filing into the dugout. They weren't warming up in the bullpen. About 35 minutes after the first pitch should have been thrown, Cubs veteran catcher Joe Girardi stepped to the microphone. I thank you for your patience. Um, we regret to inform you because of a tragedy in the Cardinal family that the commissioner has canceled the game today. Thank you. you know, it's been a, a very difficult week with the loss of Jack Buck and now the loss of Daryl Kyle. Uh, there's going to be a real, it's a real tough morning period for, for the Cardinal organization. I don't know that I have the words for it. I think if you would walk through the Cardinal clubhouse, uh, that would have hit you right square between the eyes. It's tough. Uh, all the baseball uh, guys uh, around that knew him, guys didn't know him. We're all in this uh, together. You know, it's a baseball family, so we all mourn for the, the Kyle family. We'll deal with it when the team gets here. And uh, I think from the aspect that they will never turn the ball down, but we shouldn't turn the ball down either tonight. The last few days have been tough. Uh, you know, first with Jack Buck, who, you know, of course I knew, and. You know, he dies, and we're out there playing, and you got uh, you got ashes falling from the sky. You're trying to play, and uh, then you lose a friend. So it's going to be tough to play tonight. Real tough. It's safe to say that uh, the Houston Astro organization was hit especially hard by this, given the fact that Daryl was originally signed by this organization, developed. Uh, by this organization and obviously had some some great years here and uh, because of that he also has some very close and deep relationships uh, within this organization. It has hit our team particularly hard so uh, we would like to extend again to Darrell's family, to Flynn and his children and his entire family and to everyone in baseball our prayers and our sympathy. Fans lingered in the ballpark for another hour and a half after Girardi's announcement. Many of them finally asked to leave by stadium security. And Cardinals fans, of course, expressing their disbelief that they could lose beloved broadcaster Jack Buck and fan favorite Daryl Kyle in the same week. In Chicago, Ann Werner, ESPN. And thank you. The Cardinals are scheduled to play the Cubs on Sunday night, and the Cards have voted to play. However, Major League Baseball has yet to decide if that game, in fact, will be played. Saturday evening, there was a very emotional meeting of the St. Louis team. Emotions have just been drained. I mean, this is like a, a, a something that you don't expect every day. It's a devastation. We just discussed how, how we talked about how we missed Daryl and how we have to be strong for the families. And, uh, you know, that's, that's basically what we got out of the, the conversations up there. We just, everybody went up and said something nice about him, you know, and, and talked the memories. You know, he's never missed a start in his life, and uh, tomorrow is his day, so we might play, we might not. As mentioned, the Cardinals uh, having a very rough week already in mourning over the loss of legendary broadcaster Jack Buck, a uh, broadcaster there for nearly half a century. Buck, however, was 77 years old and had a very long and full life. Darrell Kyle, at the age of 33, leaves us much too quickly. Known for owning one of the game's best curveballs, Darryl Kyle was in his 12th year in the major leagues. Long before he grew into a 215-pound pro, 
He was a skinny walk-on pitcher in a junior college in California. When he was drafted by the Houston Astros in the 30th round in 1987, he said he was so surprised, he laughed and hung up. One of his career highlights was a no-hitter, thrown against the Mets in September of 1993. That season, at the age of 24, he would make his first of three All-Star teams. With the Astros, he became a mainstay of the rotation, teaming with Mike Hampton to lead Houston to the National League playoffs in 1997. He was 19 and seven in that contract season, and he cashed in by signing a free agent deal with the Colorado Rockies. When you go in, we were playing the Astros, and if they said DK was on the mound, it's like, oh boy, <laughs> you, know, you, you, hope, you hope to squeak out a hit and, and you know and, and try and get a W. His big breaking ball, though, did not flourish in Denver's high altitude. He posted a record of 21 and 30 over two years. His career had been revitalized after being traded to the St. Louis Cardinals in a seven-player deal. When he showed up, I mean, his professionalism up and down, I mean, you know, doing the little fielding drills where he was willing to lead that, willing to share what he learned with others, willing to take responsibility for his start. In 2000, he had his first 20-win season, becoming the first Cardinal to win 20 in 15 years, and he finished fifth in the Cy Young Award voting. In the postseason that year, he earned his only playoff win, allowing just two runs in seven innings in game two of the National League Division Series against the Atlanta Braves. Last year, he was 16 and 11 and was five and four this season. In his final start, he had perhaps his best start of the year, beating the Anaheim Angels Tuesday, June 18th. He was scheduled to pitch against the Cubs Sunday night. Daryl Kyle was 33 years old. He is survived by his wife, Flynn, and their three children. Uh, well, Dave, it is known that his father died at an early age in his mid-40s after he suffered a heart attack. Uh, you know, again, there'll be an autopsy on Sunday. None of this makes it any easier as a guy at the age of 33 is gone. Brian, I mean, you find out more about people when things are going bad than when they're going well. Everybody can get on the bandwagon. When Darrell Kyle was struggling up in Denver, no excuses. He said, I'm not doing my job. I want the ball. That's my job. If you read Peter Gammons on .com, it talks about his relationship with young pitchers, especially coming to the big leagues, and that's a way of paying back for what guys like Bagwell and Biggio did down in Houston, indoctrinating him into the ways of a big leaguer. I mean, this is, this is just awful. I mean, the only thing you can even begin to equate this to with a loss of two, two people in an organization was 93 with the Indians when Tim Cruz and uh, Steve Olin, Steve Olin p perished in that boat boat crash and this is this is something you just don't get over you feel first of all for the family but it, it goes beyond that and it was a very hectic day I know Rob you were on ESPN radio for much of the day and talking about the phone calls as to this is a guy who was very punctual where is he where is Daryl Kyle people were stunned by all of this yeah absolutely Brian and and I myself and uh, you know working with Matt Weiner today it was, it's a four-hour baseball show I do for radio on ESPN and we we're gonna spend a lot of the time the majority talking about Jack Buck and the memories we had of Jack Buck uh, Matt grew up in st. Louis and became a broadcaster in St. Louis and I myself knew Jack Buck and and you realize this whole week listening to everybody talk about how much they love Jack Buck and what he meant to them and then all of a sudden when we came in today and and I came in early around noon and and uh, there was some reports that uh, you know it, it might be Daryl Kyle that is uh, you know been found in his hotel room and and I prayed and and then my wife prayed and we we just you don't want something like that to be true you can't believe that it's true and everybody is still just absolutely at a loss for words and I myself I mean there's nothing I can say except that what makes us great athletes what makes us great people are our families and when you think tonight think about the Buck family the Cardinal family the Kyle family and and pray for them and uh, their loss they lost a father and they lost a husband in the Kyle family and uh, you know my wife put it in perspective she called me in the last hour because she knew I could barely speak at the end of that show because what can you say about someone that is gone is that everybody is still here to pick up the pieces and uh, you know for, for you know the, the Kyles and the rest of the Cardinals you know you guys got to go on and, and she's got to go on but uh, you know for everybody out there appreciate what you have because uh, you know, life is too short. We'll see all the people that he touched throughout his career. Again, three teams in the major leagues. Daryl Kyle, an effect all throughout the league, and you, you really feel it uh, on this terrible, terrible day. Daryl Kyle, again, dead at the age of 33, survived by his wife, Flynn, and three children, all three under the age of six.
And just to recap once again, no foul play suspected. Uh, Daryl Kyle was found dead in his hotel room. Saturday's game postponed. Again, the Cardinals themselves decided, voted, that they would play the game on Sunday against the Cubs, but Major League Baseball has yet to decide whether the game will be played on Sunday evening.